Welcome to Grace Goes Deeper, a short video series for people who are exploring topics on Christianity, faith, and the Bible. In today's episode, we will be looking at heresies and what that means for the church today. When modern people think of the word heresy, we automatically think of something ancient and outdated. To our modern mind in pluralistic culture, the concept of heresy seems laughable and irrelevant. But I would argue in a culture like ours, the church more than ever needs to understand what heresy is and seek to fight against it. The word heresy comes from the Greek word heresis, which was used to describe a person's philosophical opinions in what school of thought they belonged to. It was a choice of how a person would think. In the second century, Irenaeus used the word for the first time in the church to declare wrong thinking about God. Irenaeus was trained under Polycarp, and Polycarp was trained under the Apostle John. This is how quickly after Christ that the church saw an increasing need to create a process to safeguard what Christ taught and to, to declare right thinking about God within the church. Thus, the definition of heresy became wrong thinking within the church about God, ourselves, and others. It's important to note that the word heresy and the, the label heretic was never used for wrong thinking outside the Christian church, but rather to identify and address wrong beliefs and challenge, uh, challenges that arose from within the church. For example, for the Romans to call Caesar God was not considered heresy because they never claimed to be Christians, they were pagans. But for someone to claim to be a follower of Christ, but reject that he was the son of God, that would be heresy. G.K. Chesterton wrote, Truth must necessarily be stranger than fiction, for fiction is the creation of the human mind and therefore congenial to it. When we look at the trademarks of past heresies within the church, what we find is an attempt to domesticate the strangeness, wonder, and majesty of the Bible, to placate it and make it more compatible to the human mind in reasoning. Heresy is not outlandish thinking. It's simply trying to overexplain truth. It's simplifying complex thinking. It's taking the mystery out of God, twisting the truth to fit into our own human reasoning. For example, the concept of the Trinity has no comparison in anything we can understand in the universe. There's something mysterious behind this truth. But what we do is we over-explain or oversimplify it in, uh, to our own reasoning, and in so doing, we create wrong thoughts about God. Therefore, heresy isn't purposely parting from right thinking, it's seeking to fix it. Arianism is a perfect example of this, and an ancient heresy that continues to creep into the church today. In order to understand Jesus and God and how they relate to each other, Arianism answers the mystery of the Trinity by suggesting that Jesus was not God, but separate. That God created Jesus, who became a good teacher, Teacher and did miracles, but was not co-eternal and existent with God. But this single heresy changes the heart of the entire faith. Though this thinking tends to answer a lot of the mystery of the Trinity, it changes everything about Christianity, and at the point of believing it, it becomes the rejection of it altogether. This is what heresy always does. Uh, today, the church does not talk about heresy very often. In fact, we don't use the term heretic, we don't excommunicate individuals from the church, and we don't have counsels to challenge wrong things thinking, but heresies continue to pose a threat to destroy the church and right thinking about God just as they did in ancient times from the inside out. Understanding and combating heresy has never been more important in the history of the church than it is today. In a recent study from the past year, it found that 56% of individuals who claim to be evangelical Christians believe that God accepts the worship of all religions or that Jesus isn't the only way to God. This means that 56% of people who claim to follow Jesus reject his claim that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him. This thinking is heretical because this thinking is not Christian. Further, the study found that 73% of people who claim to be Christian accept the idea that Jesus was created by God. This means that the ancient heresy of Arianism is thriving in the church today. How should the church respond? First, the church needs to be preaching the Bible and right theology. If the church is not preaching truth, it's not preaching. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones wrote that wherever Christian revival has happened, the heart of it has come from an individual who is preaching the word of God. If we want right thinking about God, we have to put truth into our minds and hearts. It starts there. This also means that we as Christians need to be in the word of God for ourselves in safeguarding our own individual thinking, asking the Spirit to teach us to rightly divide the word of truth. 
Second, the church needs to be preaching against wrong thinking. We need to respond to heresy, understand it, and call it out when we see it. In our pluralistic culture, this seems difficult and mean, but it's actually the most loving thing we can do for our Christian brothers and sisters. It is not the church's responsibility to correct everyone's wrong thinking in the world, but it is our responsibility to safeguard each other's thinking. Third, the church needs to be a light to the world. We need to share the gospel with those around us, but this means that we have to have a truth to share. Heresy is a threat not only to us internally, but to those around us. In a society that promotes pluralism and a relative approach to truth, truth itself loses any meaning. If all truth is based on the subjective natures of individuals and their own experiences in this life, then there is in fact no truth to be found in anything. Purposelessness, meaninglessness, and lawlessness will reign supreme. Heresy dilutes the truth in the church to this type of thinking in the same way. We, as Christians, are called to be steward of of all that God has given to us, and this includes the Word of God. Christians are stewards of truth, and with it we are to be the light of the world. Therefore, the church has a role to share truth. But in order to be effective with this, we must first safeguard truth from the inside out. We must start with scripture, believe it as truth, and teach it as truth. This is a difficult process and will require us to think. In order to think rightly about God, we have to be thinkers. Christians have to be thinkers. It will require us to be discerning. It will require us to speak up. It will require us to be challenged as individuals about our own beliefs and ideas about God. This is our responsibility as Christians, and all this will set us apart from the culture today. Heresy is extremely common in the church today, and the problem with that is that many believe they are Christians, but they don't have faith in the biblical Jesus. This means that the church is full of unbelievers, and some churches are either preaching heresy or refusing to preach against heresy. Christians have to be courageous to speak against wrong thinking about God. For where right thinking is, God is, and that's where the church needs to be.